Crafting just for fun, today on Hands On. Hands On is made possible by Elmer's Products manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmers.com Floracraft Floracraft Foam. Make it fun. Makeitfuncrafts.com Don't be so serious. Crafting is supposed to be fun. There's no right way, no correct colors, and there are enough rules in life without making them a part of your crafting. Hi, I'm Candy Cooper, and today we are just having fun with our crafts. We begin with emoticons, crazy computer symbols just for fun. Then create a diorama of your vision of outer space, and don't worry if it's realistic. Then we make funny animals, probably not like any you've ever seen before. We finish up with pillows made from old t-shirts. First up are emoticons. With a couple of keystrokes, you've got a face. And we're making ours today out of felt. Take a look at this little fella. Believe it or not, all of these pieces are interchangeable, so you can express yourself really easy. So I've made this little felt pocket, and this is actually magnetic, just like your little fella over here. And you can put this in your locker or on the refrigerator to tell everybody how you're feeling on that particular day. Let me show you how it works. These have got some little pieces of Velcro on the back. Let's make this guy kind of sad. Like, why me? You can even add a little teardrop. Or you can take away the face and put a smile, and now she's happy. So let's take a look at what we need to make some emoticons. You'll start with some felt in whatever colors you like, some foam discs, a magnetic 5x7 frame, glitter pens, paintbrush and pencil, and Velcro. You only need the scratchy side of the Velcro, not the smooth side. Cardstock, scissors, some inspiration for your faces, acrylic paint in whatever color you want your face to be, and some glue. So to get started, we're gonna paint the styrofoam yellow. I'm gonna make another yellow face. And you've seen these emoticons. They can be green or orange, whatever color you want. And you really just wanna do actually the edge. I was talking and not paying attention, and really you just need to do the edge, and I'll show you why in a minute. So you're just gonna finish up and then you have something that's like this. So the next thing you can do is trace around your piece of foam onto felt with a pencil like that and then cut it out with scissors. And I've got some ready right here. And then you're gonna use some glue. I'm just using an all-purpose white glue. And you wanna get pretty close to the edge and actually you wanna Put a pretty heavy amount of glue onto these because you're going to be using Velcro that'll pull at the face and you don't want it to come off of the foam. So you have to put a nice amount of glue over the whole thing. And you're just going to do this on both sides. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is start creating your face pieces. And I'm going to need my pencil. Now remember, we've got our inspiration up here, but you can draw whatever faces you want. Like for my frowny face, I just drew an upside down U, like this. For eyeballs, you can make little circles like this. And then you're gonna cut these out. Let's make a tongue piece. You're just gonna cut this out. And then 
just like when we traced around our styrofoam disc, you're going to trace this little piece onto some red felt, or you could make a pink tongue. Trace around this little piece. Turn it around. And then just cut it out like you did with your other pieces. And I've actually got one ready to go. Now, the felt is a little bit flimsy on its own. So what I've done is just glued it to cardstock pieces. That's why you need your cardstock. So you're just going to put a generous amount of glue, glue this piece down, and then glue your tongue on top. And I've got this one ready, and you're just going to cut this out. Super easy, right? And this is really nifty because the scissors can cut through the felt or the paper, so don't worry if you get a little off track. So I've got something like this. Now I need to make it stick. So what you're going to do is just flip it over. And remember, I'm using the scratchy side of the Velcro. When you buy Velcro, it comes in two parts so it sticks together. But we don't need the soft side because the felt is soft. So this is really scratchy. And you can just plop those into place like so. I need to trim this one down a little bit to make it fit. You just want to make sure you have an, a bunch of sticky spots. And so now you have a little piece, and I've got my little pocket here. This is your photo pocket. I've covered it in felt also. And look, I've got some felt in here. You can put a paper and pencil so when a mood inspiration strikes you, you can draw it up and make some more faces for your little emoticons. Who really knows what outer space looks like, but it's kind of fun to imagine. Take a look at our version here. You are going to come up with something totally unique to you, but here's what you'll need to make it. We start out with some plaster cloth. We have aluminum foil. We have some foam board, all different colors of paint. We've got our basic scissors, brushes, a sea sponge, and we have some really sticky glue. So let's get started. The first thing is, is I've covered my work surface because I want to make sure I don't get any on the table and I have plastic gloves on. I'm going to take my board and I've cut it to the size I'd like, which is about 12 by 12. I'm going to lay it on a sheet of foil, which is 12 by 18. And I'm just going to mark, kind of crease in on this just so I can get an idea of about the size of my board. And this is just a marking for me for later. Now, I've gone ahead and cut out foil. And what I've got here is one 12 by 12 and then six 12 by 18 sheets of foil. And they don't have to be exact. So I'm going to scritch this up. This is going to become my smaller planet. Then I have that another 18 inch sheet. And that's going to become my second planet. And then I'm going to start building the landscape along the bottom. I'm going to take one of the sheets and just kind of scratch it together. Now this is where you want to get creative. You can do just about anything you'd like. And I'm going to move these pieces to the side because the reason I made that mark is I want it to fit kind of in my space there. So I'm going to keep scratching up until I get kind of a nice landscape shape. I'm going to move this to the side because I've got one here that's pretty well made. So there's my landscape shape and it kind of fits in here. I'm going to have this one come up here and then I've got my two circles. Now I'm going to start with my plaster cloth. I've already cut this into little strips and the easiest way to work with this is to dip it in the warm water, hold it with either hand, then kind of make this like it kind of gets creamy or smushy here on the side and we're going to lay it over. Now this is going to take a little bit of time because you're going to go over each of your planet shapes and it's totally fine if it overlaps and kind of scrunches up. We're just making the, oh, the basic shape. So I go around this one until I get all of this one covered. And keep building. And then you're going to let this harden by following the manufacturer's instructions and letting it dry. Now here you can see all my pieces are kind of separate. 
but when I start laying my cloth, my plaster cloth down on it, it's kind of like a, almost like a paper mache cloth. You can just make any shape or any sculpture. And I'm going to keep doing that, dipping it in, and connecting my pieces together. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. And another point, just be really careful. When you're done with this, don't ever put it down the sink. You're going to want to make sure you discard this safely. And directions are on our website. So I'll keep going all the way around until I've got that whole shape covered and it's dried. So let me move that to the side. I have one here all done. So I have my two planets and my kind of shape that I have. So let's get our board back in place. And I want to glue this on. And now it's really important you use a really, really good glue that's going to adhere. So I'm going to put a lot of thick glue down in here. I'm going to put some on the back of this as well. And I'm going to glue this down. Now at home, of course, you're going to be really careful and go all the way along. Let's see, where do I want to put those planets? Let's put one here. And another one to the side. So we've got our general kind of positioning of everything. I'm going to set that one aside to dry. And I've got one that's all hardened and glued down. Now we want to start painting. The first thing you want to do is, I'm going to dip this in my water, is base coat this back and I'm going to use a dark blue. What I found is it's really easier to do one solid color on the background and then mix your other colors in. So I'm going to do one section here so you can get the idea. Let's see, and I'm going to do this larger planet in the blue color as my base. And I like to kind of work with it while the paint is wet. And let's do a section of the rock here too. We're going to get into all those crevices there. Don't worry if your paint goes onto the other side. And you can see like I'm kind of squishing that in. So I've got one little section done here. And I think I'm going to, let's get this planet like in a darker color. Keep squishing the paint in. I just want to get one section done so I can show you how we did the stars because it's kind of cool. Okay, we've got a little bit and as you can see I'm just dipping right back into the paint. I'm not even cleaning my brush because I want that kind of model effect. Okay, let's get a little more water in here. And I think I could use a little more blue. Okay, get a nice, kind of like that midnight blue color. Okay, now that you've got your base color, then I'm going to take my sea sponge and I'm going to come back and dip a little in the black, a little bit in the white. I'm going to just get a little, and I'm going to start sponging on top. And that's how you get that nice effect. Now, let's say I think that's got a little bit too much white. I can go back and add some more blue. And I can do the same thing by adding black onto this planet. Make that maybe a little bit darker color. Now, the only other thing is I like to create that look of the stars. So I'm going to go back as this dries and in any of the dark areas add the dots for stars and that will be my final step. The other thing I did that's kind of neat is on these dots I just pulled out a little bit and maybe that one's a little heavy. Let's do a thinner one. And that's going to give the effect of starlight and you can come back and add also some yellow. Let's go to our finished one because you can see here where I've added a little bit of red here to kind of give that night sky effect and add a little bit more yellow in the rocks. So have a really fun creating your own space scene. One shape and just imagine all the animals you can create, like these little friends I have here. Check out these cute little snails and birds on a little perch. Okay, we're gonna get started by making one of the birds. So you're gonna need some paint pens, 
chenille stems, a plastic knife, toothpicks, a craft stick, paintbrush, some yellow tissue paper, scissors, and some all-purpose glue. So first thing we're going to do is, oh wait, before I forget, we need some wood shapes and some feathers. So we've got a couple stars, a little triangle, some wiggle eyes, and some yellow feathers. So now we're ready to get started. The first thing we're gonna do is put a flat spot on the bottom of your egg. So to do that, you're just gonna grab your plastic knife and then just saw off the bottom. I'm gonna do a little bit more and let's see how he sits now. Yeah, good, and you can kind of push down a little bit to even them up. But now we're ready to start putting our yellow tissue paper on. So I've gone ahead and added a little bit of glue to my tray, but you wanna kind of water this around down a little bit because we're going to be using it to apply the tissue to the styrofoam. So the water kind of makes it, the tissue paper flex around the foam just a little bit better. So we're painting on some glue and then putting a piece of tissue. And then you're gonna seal, look how that just forms around our egg shape which is the neat thing about this project is all you need is one shape and you can come up with your own animals. Maybe you can sketch them out starting with a ball shape or an egg shape or a block, whatever you wanna start with and then see how you can create your own animal. So you just keep going until you've covered the entire bird. I'm gonna set that aside and I've got one ready to go right here. I'm gonna need my paintbrush here in a minute to paint my other pieces, so I'll just set that aside. Okay, so to start adding the little details, the other thing you wanna do is start painting some little orange stars. And these are actually, believe it or not, gonna be his claws. So you've got your acrylic paint here. And I'm just gonna paint most of it except for where my fingers are and I'm going to set that aside to dry and I'll catch that corner in a minute and got another one here because he's got two feet and then don't forget to paint a little triangle for his orange beak. The other thing that you're going to want to paint is the perch that he sits on. So I'm going to grab my large craft stick with some brown acrylic paint. And I'm just gonna take a pass down each side. It's okay if it's kind of brushy because it looks like a real stained piece of wood. And then I'm just gonna lay it here and grab the other end with some. Did I get it all? I think I got it. Okay, so let's set those aside to dry and now start putting our little feathered friend together. So the first thing you're gonna do is use a toothpick to poke a couple holes. Let's find a good spot. This looks nice and good. Okay, so we're gonna put a couple holes and wiggle the toothpick around and that's where we're gonna put his two feathered wings. So you want those to be on exact opposite sides. Okay. The other thing you'll wanna get ready is the perch. And I've got a couple of pipe cleaners here that I've already wrapped. But to do this, I'm just gonna put my orange and red pipe cleaners together. So I've got a total of four. And you wanna start by twisting them in the middle, like so. And then you're just gonna keep twisting one end and then the other end, just like this one here. And then you're gonna wrap this around the base a couple times. And then on the other side, we'll start down here this time and finish it off. And that gives us a little perch. And then you're gonna grab your glue again and start gluing the feet on the bottom, like so. And then let's, let's work on his face. The other thing I did is I took a paint pen and drew just a little bit of details around his feet, like so. And 
around the beak. I'm going to add two little dots like that. And now we're going to use our glue to attach the feathers. So you just fill those two holes up with glue and stick them in like so. And then a couple dots for some eyes in the beak. Like that. Where's my eyes? Love wiggly eyes. I'm starting to take shape. And now we're going to just put a little glue on the bottom of our perch and feet and stick them in place. And check out our website for other animals you can make with just one shape. T-shirts are probably the most comfortable clothes, so why not make a pillow with an old T-shirt? Maybe one that doesn't fit anymore or from a team you used to play on, just as a great memory. So we've got this T-shirt pillow. This is actually using a plain white tee. And let's take a look at some other supplies you'll need to decorate your pillow. So you'll need some stencils. And these are letters and shapes. You've got some permanent markers, t-shirts, clothespins, some tacky glue, straight pins, and some polyfill. Okay, to get started, you're gonna, you'll also need a piece of foam board. Okay, to get started, you're gonna measure the bottom of your t-shirt three inches. And you'll just fold the t-shirt. You can mark it in a few spots with a pencil. But what you're going to do is just line up your ruler and cut in, let's start down here, cut in to three inches. And you're going to space these about one inch apart. The important thing is that you cut the back side the same as the front because this is what we're going to line up and not to hold in all of that puffy fill, uh, filling. So you're just going to keep cutting and cutting until you've gone the full length of the t-shirt. I'm going to set this down here for a second. And then you're going to start knotting the bottom. And you can see I've gone ahead and started and you're just going to knot all of your little strips. Now the fun part, we're going to decorate this t-shirt with whatever you want. And this is a great project that you could get the girls together at a slumber party or get your teammates together and maybe have some pizza and some t-shirt pillow making. So I'm putting a board in because it's not so easy to write on top of fabric, but with this firm foam board underneath, it makes our lives a little bit easier. So then you're gonna grab a stencil and I'm gonna start with a heart shape. And these are really cool because you can pop them apart and now you can start tracing your design. So go ahead and lightly block out your design and coming around the edge. Then you're gonna grab one of your permanent markers. I'm using these really cool markers that actually are double-ended. So if I open one end, I've got brown, and the other end is red, which is what I'm going to make my heart. Now, you want to hold your t-shirt really firm, and then I just like to go in one direction, down to the tip, and then up around the top. And you can use the edge with the fine tip, or you can use the wider, the side, to kind of shade. It's up to you. You can color it all in. Or, if you don't want to use stencils coloring in, you can, um, everybody could maybe take turns signing their name on your t-shirt and then you have a neat little memory from the night. So once you're finished coloring in your design, you can start stuffing. And this is where our polyfill comes in. Actually, I take that back. We're not gonna start stuffing. We gotta seal up the neck. I gotta pop my foam board out. And we've gotta start sealing up the sleeves. So you're just gonna put a line of glue along the seam of your sleeve. And you wanna make sure you get this end to end. 
Nice and easy. And then you're going to use clothespins to keep that lined up while it closes or while it seals. And you can put them along the full length. And then the next step, of course, would be to seal up the other sleeve. But we're going to jump ahead and I'm going to show you how to fill this thing. So you've got your ends knotted, your sleeves are sealed, and the next thing you're going to do is grab your fill and just start stuffing your t-shirt. And you would keep stuffing and stuffing until it's nice and plump. And then you would seal the neck of the shirt exactly how you did with the sleeves. So let's take a look at the finished project and check out some of these other designs that I've used my stencils on. If you use, if you look at this sleeve, look, I've got some spirals and then some letters and I use the heart as an O. You can doodle your own little hearts on here and there's flowers, some more spirals. Anything goes with this super fun pillow t-shirt. Hope you just had fun with today's craft. Another way to have fun is to make things for your friends and family. Hope you'll tune in next time for great gift ideas. Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids' craft projects for every occasion, season, and even school subject are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1408. A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Hands-On Crafts for Kids, Crafting Every Day, Series 1400, is available for $39.99 plus shipping and handling. Visit craftsforkids.com to order. Make crafting a part of every day with Hands-On. Hands-On is made possible by Elmer's Products, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmers.com Floracraft Floracraft Foam. Make it fun. Makeitfuncrafts.com